In this video, we're going to talk about how you can be a certified welding inspector. Tune in up to the end of the video as I'm going to give you tips on how I passed the certified welding inspector examination. But first, let's look into what the exam is all about. The requirements are in terms of education, experience, and the examination itself. The required experience of the candidate will be determined based on his educational attainment, as you can see in this table. I have indicated some notes here regarding the important points in the qualification. Experience of the candidate must be indicated in the application form together with the supporting documents such as resume, CV, and training certifications. As seen in the table above, the higher the, higher the educational attainment, the experience requirement will also be lessened. Additional educational attainment can be applied to reduce the required experience for the candidate. Just a disclaimer though, different local chapters of the welding examination providers around the world may alter the requirements slightly but they generally follow AWS guidelines. So, it is also important for the candidate to check the local requirements. Here are the different parts of the examination. The first part is the fundamentals which consist of 150 multiple choice questions. Part B is the practical part of the examination which consists of 50 questions. Part C is the open book code in which the examiner will select the applicable codes. The Part A of the exam will test the candidate on the fundamentals of welding and its different processes. For the practical part, the candidates are tested with practical knowledge and different measuring tools. In my experience taking the exam, this part focuses more on weld flaw detection and non-destructive testing and destructive testing. So, it might differ slightly as well depending on your local exam provider. The open book code is where the candidate will choose what code he will be tested upon. Basically, the examiner will counter questions that require him to be familiar with various codes and standards. It is paramount that the candidate is familiar with the page location of important clauses and tables of the code or standard that he will choose. One of the codes that will be chosen upon is the Structural Welding Code for Steel, which is AWS D1.1. This code is focused on the design of welded connections for structural steel and it also has a pre-qualification of WPS which only means that a PQR will not be needed to perform the procedure. This code is widely used for the structural connections we see in bridges, buildings, among others. API 1104 focused more on the following. Just a note, I personally took this code when I sit down for the exam. This is the shortest standard out of any code or standard I will mention later. That is something to think about. API 1104 focused on qualification of welding procedures, welding qualification, design and preparation of joints, testing of production welds, NDT, repair of or removal of defects, radiographic testing procedure, and automatic welding. Now, the ASME codes, section 8, 9, 31.1 and 31.3 are packaged together. Reason being is that their clauses are referenced with each other. These standards are commonly used in oil and gas application, process plants, and power generating plants. Section 8 and 9 are for pressure vessel construction and welding qualifications respectively. B31.1 is for power piping and B31.3 is for process piping. Generally though, choose the standard in which you practice in your workplace so that when you take the exam, you are very familiar with the page locations of the tables and clauses that the question will require you to answer correctly. This part of the exam is tedious and time-consuming, so it is essential that a candidate practice skimming through the books efficiently to avoid running out of time in the exam. With all that information, what does the Certified Welding Inspector Aspirant need to score in order to pass? Getting at least 72% is needed to become a CWI. However, getting at least 60% will grant the candidate a CAWI 
or Certified Associate Welding Inspector. Some notes regarding the exam. Candidates must take an eye examination whether natural or corrected. Note that corrected vision are also eligible. After passing the exam, the CWI is now qualified to visually inspect the welds and make a sound decision out of that result. The CWI certificate does not specify what code the inspector used on the exam. Now this is particularly advantageous since it will give you flexibility for the work opportunities that you will possibly seek after being certified. CAWI requires fewer experience for each educational level. Some students only achieve for CAWI level and this requires fewer years of experience than a CWI. Now time for the tips. The first tip I'm going to give you is that enroll to a training provider and a good one at that. Not only they will guide you on what the topics will be for the exam, but they will give you the knowledge base necessary for the examination as the exam is fairly difficult. If you are a welder, you might be surprised that the exam is quite a lot to take also. As an engineer myself, I found the topics and the exam itself overwhelming as well. The second tip I'm going to give you is get good notes, very good notes. It doesn't matter if you're taking the CWI, BMP, Six Sigma or whatever certification exam. If I am going to take that certification exam, I uh, make sure that I take good notes and recreate the lecture notes by the training provider and make it my own so I can understand it easily. The third tip is get the codes and standards necessary, whether you borrow it or rent it, doesn't matter. You have to get the codes. So you have to, you have to be familiar with the locations of the clauses, but not memorize them because it is counterproductive to memorize those clauses. You just need to be familiar enough that it will not take you too much time locating those clauses in tables, especially for the open book code because it can be very time consuming if you find it very hard to locate those and answer the simple multiple choice. One thing I did though is that for the very simple open book code answers or questions, I, 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 ma I managed to memorize some of them but I didn't do it for the long clauses or the long drawn out uh, need to memorize clauses of the open book code. The next step is sticky notes. Uh, so related to the third tip, uh, having sticky notes on the open book part of the examination, pasting them on the relevant pages and clauses of the book or the standard will help you uh, not to take too much time with the exam. My tip to you is to color code them if it is a table or a a clause in the open book that is relevant to what you're taking up. For example, API 1104. So I tape the sticky notes as green if it is the first page of the chapter. I tape it as yellow if it is a clause or a table. So that's it. I hope this helps you become a CWI. If you haven't done it yet, so hit the like and smash that subscribe button. See you on the next one. Salute.